Hi guys, it's Jeff at the farm here, and this is our wildflower meadow. It's massive. It's about four and a half acres. Uh, we started it two and a half years ago. Now we were really lucky in that the farmer had tilled the land first, so there was no grass. Normally when you sow a wildflower meadow, you'll be sowing it into grass, and then you'll have to do your side cut um, at the end of the summer to stop all those grasses seeding and taking over. Um, we can leave them a little bit longer here because there is no grass, so I can leave all these seed heads. So it's actually October now, um, and I haven't yet scythed it. Obviously, one man and a scythe cannot do all of this work, so I'm going to scythe what I can off the wildflower meadow, um, because that is the most important thing, is to cut off the seed pods, and then you don't want any... Uh, or any of the dead stuff lying on the soil and mulching it and increasing the fertility. Wildflowers do best on a low fertility soil. If you've ever walked past like a construction site or something like that and you see all the poppies coming up in the freshly overturned soil, that's because they love uh, low fertility. Um, so we need to side this and then we need to remove all of the stuff that's left. Now I can't do all of this today and the wildflower meadow strip is about five meters wide so I'm going to work my way down to this bit minimum and just then uh, rake off the, um, the thatch and the cut off stuff and then next spring I'll probably come back and cut off some of these weeds as they're coming up and starting to flower so they don't then spread their seed. Um, so I'm going to get scything and uh, I will show you more when I'm done. Scything is hard work but I've done quite a bit in half an hour I've still got all of that to go though, and I've got to rake. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and then I'm going to get on with it. So I've been out here for about an hour and a half. I'm approaching the one third mark, so there's a hell of a lot to go. Um, my scything technique probably isn't spot on. And uh, although I've used a whetstone to, sh whetstone to sharpen the scythe, I probably need to sharpen it a little bit more. But you get the general idea, so you need to size it back and then you need to clear all of the, um, the dead cut off stuff. Um, I'm just moving it to the sides where the weeds are because eventually they're going to get um, cut out too. But the wildflower meadow isn't in that weed patch yet. So it doesn't matter whether that soil is slightly more fertile because when it comes to it we'll, we'll all uh, have the field chopped and take it away. So I'm going to carry on, work for a couple more hours and see how much I can get done. If you've got any questions about planting a wildflower meadow or managing it, just let me know in the comments. Um, I'll do some more videos on wildflower meadows next year, so make sure you hit the subscribe. Um, and I've got a hell of a lot more work to do, so I'm going to have another cup of tea and get on with it. So I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It might be a female stag beetle. I'm going to look it up for proper identification. She was flying around in the air as I was uh, scything. Very, very pretty. Oh, they're quite big. I'll put my finger in so you can compare. Quite a large bug. Wonderful. I'm going to add her to the, well, once I know what she is, add her to the uh, biodiversity list for the farm. And look, here's a cool mushroom as well.